well, this evening, we're going to, being that it's um, Thanksgiving week, and uh, first of all, we're going to take a few minutes uh, just to, if you have a couple of um, maybe praises made from the year, uh, just to share, and I know I'm kind of blindsiding you, maybe, but uh, if you have anything that you'd like to share, if you have something in mind now, you can go ahead and share it, and we're also going to be going through the lesson. But we're going to have these different little breaks along the way um, added in, so you can feel free to share during those breaks. So, is there anybody like to share something maybe from the year? Uh, just a praise. Yes, buddy. I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, that's a great Amen, brother. Now, what, I, what it is, yeah, it is. You know, that's right. I, I shouldn't be here. Mm-hmm. I fell in the flu and stayed there a day and a night. Laying in the floor, bleeding from your brain mm-hmm. and paralyzed. And when I got to the hospital, you know, they didn't rush me to When I got out, the, the doctor said it healed itself. Mm-hmm. And so I'm still here now. But the thing is, what you do is you don't want to be here and let that go to waste. Because mm-hmm. for right. some reason, I'm still here. Mm-hmm. And now we need to get out to be a soul runner, get tracks out, support ministers. Because I don't own myself no more. I was paid with a price, and he bought it when I went to Calvary, when he went to Calvary for me. That's right. And so people, if, when they see me, they don't see it, but it's a miracle. Amen. Because I shouldn't be here. I mean, how many people did you get to the doctor say to heal itself? Mm-hmm. And what I do with that, I tell people, you know what they say? That's a miracle. I said, yeah, God's in a miracle working with me. Yeah, that's the truth. The people let things go to waste. But I'm telling you, we take things for granted. And but when we see miracles, Justin, sometimes we just think it's accident. Oh, what? Yeah, but, but like I said, because that just don't happen. I should have died. I should, and they called a cannon ball, and Cannon didn't come. He, he didn't, you know, he didn't know there was anything wrong. He didn't know it come. But it was meant to be like that. And then, because if I got that, they did something, then they could see they done something. But they, they, they say, it's in healed itself now. I still got this leg dragging, you know. But I mean, it may be, just like in the Bible, he asked him three times, he said, my grace is sufficient. Mm-hmm. He said, it might want to be, keep me humble, but it might just come, come back, my arm came back good. Mm-hmm. But God's still in the miracle working business. Mm-hmm. And it's more than turkey and dressing. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, what, I mean, people do, it almost shadows Christ, this, this turkey and dressing thing. The main thing, you know, is, uh, and this is a blessing. All these, these all these people, this church and all, it's a blessing, man. So, and look what you've been through. And look what uh, Alan been through. You remember when Alan went home from one minute and he fell at the door and couldn't even get out the truck at all? And couldn't even hardly get the key in? He's a miracle. Sure. Amen. All right, speak up, Alan. <laughs> you said you a miracle. <laughs>
was never going back there. And I would never find another job that had the, the pay and the benefits that did. So it was scary to walk away from that. But hmm. the Lord has blessed us. My wife still works. If I had my way, she'll work forever. She, I tease her about that all. I told her she could quit when she was like 70. <laughs> she goes, no. I, she goes, about three more years. I said, man, maybe I can squeeze five out of it. <laughs> I'm thankful for that. I mean, you know. So I get to spend more time with my grandkids and stuff, so, you know, yeah. doing stuff that I want to do, you know, working in the yard and flowers and shrubs and all that. I've really gotten into that stuff, so. It's been it's been peaceful and I've enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Great. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I just thought it was one thing. You just your little baby just came. Remember when y'all had that little well, I know you did. That's what you <laughs> <laughs> was. About I mean it went through some terrible times. It just looked like sometimes it will make you get in, you know. Your little baby. Yeah, there is a time whenever the pain is still get choked up on that one whenever she stopped breathing that time. Oh. Mm -hmm. Got her to the hospital and they got her back, and that was quite the fiasco. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Lord's good. I mean, but it, 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 it looked, it's doing good now that it, it's coming along. It's oh, she's going to help me set up on Yeah. I know your wife's hard. I mean, your wife was keep down. Mm -hmm. She was just going through some terrible times because, you know, a woman, she, she's, I mean, I'm not a woman, but she. I mean, when she goes through something, she takes it different than a man. Mm -hmm. It's just something about it, you know, that child, and she would, she would have to be hard on her. Right. I'm talking a testimony for your wife. You take everybody's away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm thankful, personally, just for getting me out of the hospital this past year, and okay, that was quite the fiasco in itself, and all of that, and then, uh, and, but anyway, just thank the Lord for it. You know, and that was his grace too, providing the healing. All right, anybody else want to share right now? All right, we have a few more minutes, I think. So uh, we're going to go through, <clears throat> and um, it was something, and I can't, to be honest, I can't remember what it was that triggered this, but uh, in Alan's message on Sunday morning, um, it triggered just the, his, to be honest, I've been battling with what to share tonight, and there was something that was said, and I can't exactly remember even what it was now, but, but it was just to share different individuals in the Bible um, who came back and were thankful in the end. And so that's what we're going to kind of look at. We're going to look, uh, we're going to look at 10 different characters and, um, just briefly, we're not going to go through the whole story about each one, but we're going to bring out just these ten characters and how they were thankful. Um, first of all, the first one was, and, and if you would turn over to Exodus, we'll look at a couple different references, and, and each one there will only be about maybe two or three verses, but just, again, pointing to the fact of their thankfulness. Here in Exodus chapter 15, and we'll be reading verses 20 through 21. And so again, just a, there's not really a title to it. It's just 10 biblical examples of thankfulness. Well, the first one is Miriam. Miriam. And here, uh, just a little bit of background. Uh, Miriam was the oldest sister of Moses and Aaron and gave thanks to God while playing her tambourine and dancing with joy with her uh, with other women whom God saved from the Egyptians after they crossed over the Red Sea. Notice here in Exodus chapter 15, notice in verses 20, and well, let's back up to verse 19 here, and again, Exodus 15, beginning verse 19, it says, For the horses of Pharaoh went with his chariots and his horsemen into the sea, and the Lord brought back the waters of the sea upon them, but the children of Israel went on dry land in the midst of the sea. Then it says in verse 20, Then Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took the timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbre, uh, timbrels and with dances. And Miriam answered them, uh, Sing to the Lord, for he 
for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. Isn't that something? You think about, you know, this verse, and, and we don't hear much about dancing, but here, can you imagine being there to see not only, well, number one, is being on the, uh, on the first side of the, of the sea, right? Whenever you know the, that the uh, Pharaoh and his whole army is coming down on you. And then you see God work and open up that sea Amen. to be able to, you know, go across and dry ground. And you have these scientists today and everything, you know, you know, well, they probably went, you know, way upstream where it was real shallow. And, you know, but since if you, if you look into it, they've actually found chariot wheels. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, it's exactly. pretty, pretty obvious. Um, what happened with that was some chariot, you know, horse got mad at this particular rider. That's exactly what happened. Was it went across on uh, dry ground, but the nation of Egypt did not. And so here you see this, and again there in verse 20 it says, And Miriam the prophetess, and again the sister of Aaron took the timbrel, and then all these ladies go out. And notice, notice here in verse 21 what she says. She says, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. It wasn't, it wasn't just the idea that, wow, you know, man, we, we, we got through that and got through on dry ground, right? But it was the whole idea that of just praising God, giving glory to who glory was due. And that was to God for what he had done. And, and I think that's, that can be said of our lives, too. We have to be very careful, right? And everything that's done, Amen. great things. We've talked about you know, various things even tonight um, that, that people are grateful for. And whether it's huge things, or maybe even sometimes, I think that's, that hits me sometimes, is sometimes even the little things we're not as thankful for because maybe they seem so little. Right. But to be able to be thankful, no matter what it is that the Lord does on our behalf. And so here it says, she says, sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. And you know, when you think about it in our lives, that could be said of our lives, even for this past year. He's trying gloriously in each one of our lives. If nothing else, just like Brother uh, Buddy said, we're here, right? Amen. He's given us the health and the strength that we do have. It may not all be up to par that we'd like it to be, but it's here. We're here, right? And he's given us another opportunity to gather uh, on, right before Thanksgiving to give him praise. So Miriam, that's the first one. All right, again, along the way, if you think of anything that you wanted that you're thankful for, interject, and we can interject those in between these various characters. So I just find and thought of something. It gets it's got to break his heart. But well, like you said, just when you said little things that he does, mm -hmm. and we're too ashamed to bring him over to say anything about them. Yeah. And, and we don't like, and it's got to it's got to break his heart. He's trying to help us. And we don't even, we, we don't even recognize it. Like you said, not, when you said little things, I thought that, that's the truth. Mm -hmm. Even it don't have to be big things. Right. And he's working in that life every day. And it's a shame that we can't take notice of that. That's right. Because yeah. you said Sunday, you know, you talked before, he'll never leave us or forsake us, so he's always with us. And things are happening, and we take it for granted sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's got to break his heart. That's right. Well, the next one's going to be in 1 Samuel. If you turn over to 1 Samuel, it's right before 2 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 2. Are you acting up with your white hair? <laughs> yeah, you probably hear about that a little bit. So 1 Samuel chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. And the next character we're going to look at is, is Hannah. Hannah. And here in 1 Samuel chapter 2, we're looking at verses 1 through 10. And here, just a little bit of synopsis. Uh, Hannah gave a long prayer of thanks to God in 1 Samuel 2 because God granted her petition for a son. Once Samuel was weaned, Hannah and her husband, Elkanah, uh, brought him to Eli, the priest, to be dedicated to the Lord. So that's the backdrop here for this text. And again, we're talking about Hannah, 1 Samuel chapter 2, beginning in verse 1, and we'll read down to verse 10. 
And it says, And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. I smile at my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. No one is holy like the Lord, for there is none besides you. Nor is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let no arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is the God of knowledge. Amen. And by him actions are weighed. So he's, she's talking here to individuals, and she says, talk no more so very proudly. You know, you think about it in our lives. What do we really have to be proud over? <laughs> Nothing. Because ultimately everything comes from the hand of the Lord. So she says, so she says talk no more so very proudly. Let no arrogance come from your mouth. Why? For the Lord is the God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows are the mighty men are broken, and those who stumbled are girded with strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, and the hungry have ceased to hunger. Even the barren has, has borne seven, and she who has many children has become feeble. The Lord kills and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and brings up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and lifts up. He raises the poor from the depths and lifts the beggar from the ash heap. To set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. And he has set the world upon them. He will guard the feet of his saints. But the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength no man shall prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces. And from heaven he will thunder against them. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. And so here we see this. And you know what really struck me whenever I was looking through these, this text? And here, once again, we're talking about Samuel being born, right? And what really struck me was in this, there wasn't even too much even said about Samuel. She's saying this on the heels, because in verses 19 down through verse 28, we see that Samuel being born in, in the chapter before, in chapter 1. But then we see this, and this was Hannah's prayer of thanksgiving to God. But you know what really struck, struck me with this is, is this point. Here in this, I think whenever we see the Lord truly work in a, in a miraculous way, it really opens up our eyes to the reality of how much else that he really does on our behalf. Um, it really helps us to be able to, to realize that, wow, the Lord not only did this, but, wow, then just like we're talking about the little things and the huge things of life where he works and he, and he blesses. And this, and really, you see that all throughout this chapter. It, it's area and, and example after example of where Hannah is actually talking about, hey, this is how the Lord blesses, and this is how the Lord takes down, and this is how the Lord lifts up, and it's all by the hand of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, she comes down to then in verse 10, where she says, The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces from heaven. He will thunder against them. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. And then she ends this portion by saying, he will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. And so once again, you know, we should be thankful. And once again, as we see the Lord work in one area, not to just be thankful for that one set situation, but that should really open up the horizon of realizing how much the Lord really does for us on a daily basis. So once again, a great example here from Hannah um, of just her thankfulness and just almost an explosion of just in various ways of how thankful she was and realizing that, hey, everything that happens in this world, it ultimately comes from the hand of God. So what a great reminder. All right, anybody else?
else have a, anything they, they were thankful for? And, uh, no. and then uh, look what he did with his churches he got. We didn't even have Sunday school. We couldn't have devotions or nothing. And, uh, and you couldn't walk or nothing hardly. Couldn't, I mean, you couldn't mm -hmm. have it. And, uh, and look at what the Lord, and it even said with us, we, we might even have to cut back on that missionary as much, you know, mm -hmm. keeping them kind of sponsored. That's a blessing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I mean, you see how the church look almost like we bridge the bowl. I mean, everything is going down. And then the Lord says, now we're showing something. Do we see it, though? That's what we got to do. And, and people see it, they don't talk about it. What good is it then? Right. You know, I mean, let, let them know that God is working. Mm -hmm. We even were able to send the missionaries Christmas Christmas offering and, mm -hmm. and uh, for Christmas. And that's always a big question mark each year. And so it's a blessing. You know, shoe boxes. Shoe boxes. That's mm -hmm. right. Just delivered, we mentioned that again on Sunday. Delivered 35 shoe boxes. And that's a blessing. Yeah. So. We ain't going to leave you by praising the Lord. That's right. You better not. <laughs> All right. Next one is going to be in 2 Samuel. So it's a few pages over. 2 Samuel chapter 22. 2 Samuel chapter 22. Um, very familiar portion of scripture. I'm sure about everyone can get up here and recite it. Talking about David and winning the battle um, against the Philistines. We're not going to read through all the verses. Um, it would take the rest of the time. But I will say this. Between now and Thanksgiving, if you would, we're going to read down through some of it. But it's it's all 51 verses, really. It's, it's really through the whole chapter. Um, it's, it's a, even though it's in 2 Samuel, it's give, David giving praise to God after the battle of the, uh, over the Philistines. And let's read a few of these verses down through here. And let's, look, look how he begins. Verse 1, again, 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 1. Then David spoke to the Lord... The word of the song, the one on the day when the Lord had delivered him from the hand of his enemies and from the hand of Saul, and he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, the God of my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my strong tower and my refuge. Actually, this almost sounds almost parallel to Psalm 27, if you think about it. Uh, my stronghold and my refuge, my Savior, you save me from violence. I will call upon you who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. When the waves of death surrounded me, the floods of ungodliness made me afraid. The sorrows of Sheol surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. And cried out to my God. He heard my voice from his temple, and my cry entered his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled, and the foundations of heaven quaked and, and were shaken, because he was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils, and devouring fire from his mouth. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heaven, heavens also, and came down with darkness under his feet. He rode upon a cherub and flew, and he was seen upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness canopies around him, dark waters and thick, thick clouds of the skies. From the brightness before him, coals of fire were kindled. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice. He sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning bolts, and he vanquished them. Then the channel of the sea were seen. The foundations of the world were uncovered at the rebuke of the Lord and at the blast of the breath of his nostrils. And once again, you see David here talking about it, how the Lord went before. And, and again, it goes on throughout the rest of this chapter and, and basically giving praise to the Lord and showing the almighty hand of God and how that he was the one that vanquished the enemies. And once again, taking the opportunity, you know, at the, at, it was said at whenever, um, that's whenever Saul became angry, whenever David had killed, you know, his, basically his, his, or Saul had killed his thousands, but 
David killed his tens of thousands, and you know, and basically that's when Saul became angry. But you know what? One thing I think about this is is this thought. Even whenever he killed Goliath, that didn't go to his head. That wasn't something where he took pride in and, and, and let it just basically that one rampant. It was a realization that, hey, God is the one that did this. And it was all for his glory to begin with. That's the whole reason why David went out there to even face Goliath. It was for God's name's sake. And so once again, we see that David took the time at the end of, you know, it wasn't just like, you know, hey, look what we did. We wouldn't vanquish this, this great enemy. He took the time to come back and, and write this, this portion here in 2 Samuel of giving thanks to God for what he had done in vanquishing the enemy. So here we see this example from David. Uh, anybody else have any other blessings? I want you to come out of this. Take up so I won't have to keep talking. Yeah, I'll tell you, I won't mind that doing the blessing. All right. Well, All right, we're going to be in 1 Kings, the next one, 1 Kings chapter 8. 1 Kings chapter 8. And beginning in verse 14. First Kings chapter 8. And beginning in verse 14. We're going to read down to verse 21. And basically, basically here is Solomon. Solomon is the next character. Uh, King Solomon thanks God for all he had done to provide for Israel in his prayer of dedication to the temple. So that's the basis and the backdrop uh, for this text. And again, 1 Kings chapter 8, beginning in verse 14, and we'll read down through verse 21. Then it says, Then the king turned around and blessed the whole assembly of Israel, while all the assembly of Israel was standing, and said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who spoke with his mouth to my father David, and with his hand has fulfilled it, saying, Since the day that I was brought, I brought my people Israel out of Egypt, I have chosen no city from any tribe of Israel in which to build a house, that my name might be there. But I chose David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of my father David to build a temple for the name of the Lord God of Israel. But the Lord said to my father David, whereas it was in your heart to build a temple for my name, you did well that it was in your heart. Nevertheless, you shall not build the temple, but your son, who will come from your body, he shall build the temple for my name. So the Lord has fulfilled his word, which he spoke, and I have filled the position of my father David and sit on the throne of Israel as the Lord promised. And I have built a temple for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And there I have made a place for the ark in which the covenant of the Lord, which he made with our fathers, when he brought them out of the, of the land of Egypt. So here you think about it. They had built this temple. They say that there was nothing that really, would, everything else would pale in comparison to how beautiful this temple was at the time. And you think about this and you know, you could have taken, once again, something else that man could have taken pride of. But here, even Solomon took the time to be able to dedicate this temple and realize that, hey, this was for no other reason but for the worship of the Lord. And so once again, you see here, even in this, uh, we see Solomon taking that opportunity to give praise to God and, and to ultimately, and, and what better situation, right? They're dedicating a temple. Uh, to praise and to worship God in. So once again, we see here Solomon as this character. All right, anyone else? All right, we're going to look over in uh, Psalm 111. Psalm 111. Psalm 111. Uh, it's not really stated who the writer of this psalm is. Um, but we know a couple of different things here. The author of this beloved psalm begins with the following words. Praise the Lord with an exclamation point. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart and the company of the upright and the congregation. 
Psalm 111 is filled with praise for God's wondrous works. And the psalmist ends by reminding people that God's praise endures forever. Let's read this. It's ten verses. It says, Psalm 111, Praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart, in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, studied by all who have pleasure in them. That, let, let me pause there. Isn't that a great verse for us to Amen. Think about that, what it's saying. The, the works of the Lord are great and studied by all who have pleasure in them. You only read really what you have pleasure in, right? No matter what that is, whether it's some novel, you know, fiction, nonfiction, whatever the case may be. But you think about this verse where it says the works of the Lord are great. How else are you going to be able to know that? Through his word is studying them. And it says, study by all who have pleasure in them. So it's a great question, isn't it? Do we have actually pleasure in studying the word of God? Is that something that we take delight in? And it goes on and it says, verse 3, his work is honorable and glorious and his righteousness endures forever. What a blessing that is, right? It wasn't just to the children of Israel in the Old Testament, but it's to the New Testament and he incorporates the Gentiles who have been grafted into this blessing of salvation that he's given. And now we have that even ourselves. We're here tonight because of his graciousness in our lives. And he goes on and, and it says in verse 4, he has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Verse 5, he has given food to those who fear him. He will even be, he will ever be mindful of his covenant. We've mentioned that in times gone by, you know. In his covenants, he never goes back on his promises. We do at times, but he never does. He's always faithful. In verse 6, he has declared to his people the power of his works. We see it every day. In giving them the heritage of the nations, the works of his hands are verity and justice. All his precepts are sure. This, they stand fast forever and ever. All his precepts, everything that we have in his word, it says here, are sure. It's something that you can take to the bank. And it says that they stand fast forever. What a blessing that is. It's not like, okay, well, this isn't going to expire in, you know, 2032. He says that his word endures forever. And it goes on, it says that are done in truth and uprightness. He has sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Reminds us of that fact again. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. A good understanding have all those who do his commandments. And his praise endures forever. And as we think about, once again, this Thanksgiving time, what a great reminder through this text, isn't it? And then he ends at the very end of verse 10, his praise endures forever. But it's only endures forever as long as we give him praise, right? So really, again, it's another great reminder for each one of us to be sure every day to be giving him praise for something that he does. We really should give praise for everything, right? And so as we've been Amen. talking about, but at least take that opportunity in, in coming for the Lord with our petitions to spend an equal amount of time praising Him for what He's doing in our life. So once again, the author is Psalm 111. Um, if you have another praise, thank you. We're going to try to do a couple more here. Um, uh, the next one's going to be in Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. You've made it to the New Testament. That would be good. That would be good that the way you work in it, you're giving people opportunities. Mm -hmm. You read a little bit, then you give about the opportunity to, to praise him. Right. Luke chapter 1, and beginning in verse 24 through 25, and Elizabeth is this character. Elizabeth is the mother of John the Baptist was thankful that God took away her reproach among the people of Israel. Before becoming pregnant with John, Elizabeth was barren and long beyond childbearing age. So here we see 
um, Elizabeth and the story here. So Luke chapter 1, beginning in verse 24, and reading down through verse 25. Well, actually, let's back up to 23. It says, verse 23 says, So it was, as soon as the days of his service were completed, that he departed to his own house, and after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she hid herself five months, saying, Thus the Lord has dealt with me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among the people. And once again, we see here Elizabeth, another individual that was joyful over the birth of a child. And ultimately, we see that it was John the Baptist, and who he was the, the forerunner, right? to be able to come, to be able to tell people of the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ. And so we see also an important birth here, isn't it? Yes. Um, to come. So, once again, we see Elizabeth, a great example uh, here in, the, in Luke, of her giving thanks to God uh, for the birth of her child. Also, in, in Luke chapter 1, just a few verses over, beginning in verse 46, uh, not to be outdone, we see here Mary, and here, the, 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 uh, here Mary is in a beautiful song of praise, known as the, the Magnificent. Uh, he gives thanks to the Lord for being chosen to bear the incarnate Son of God. I might also make mention, too, as a reminder, there's uh, some other various um, forms of Christianity that, that uh, look at Mary and worship Mary. Mary was just a vessel. That God chose right. to use uh, to bear the to bear the Messiah, and so once again, it's, she's not someone to be set up on a pedestal, literally in her backyard to worship, but she was a vessel. And you know, it's a great illustration too in that God wants to e use each one of us for His honor and glory, mm -hmm. in different ways, obviously, but He still wants to use us just the same. Mm -hmm. So here's Mary, and again, Luke chapter one, beginning verse forty-six down to verse 55, and it says, And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. Notice, in that statement, that's a very important statement there, verse 48. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For, henceforth, for behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. It's not that she's saying, you know, you know, oh, look at me, I, I bore the Messiah. The next verses really clear that up, don't they? Because notice what it goes on to say. It says, for he who is mighty has done great things for me. It's God that's done this. It's not Mary. He's using her. So it goes on and says, and holy is his name. And then it goes on in verse 50 and says that his mercy is on those who fear him Amen. from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. A lot of the same verses were here, even from the, or the same thoughts, even from the Old Testament. Verse 53, he has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. And then it says in verse 56, and Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her house. But here, once again, you see another mother giving thanks. And, and again, here's Mary about to bear Jesus Christ, the Messiah of the world. And you see her, her heart about it here. And once again, just tickled to death, right, that the Lord chose her to be able to be a vessel to be used of him. So once again, giving thanks to God for what he has done. Um, anybody else have any other blessings you want to share? Um, I, I have noticed something in this year of COVID. You know, when I go out, I go to grocery stores, I go to Walmart, and when I have to, you know, that kind of thing. But something that I've noticed is like 
an undercurrent of people who are in their own way trying to uh, rise against or uh, whatever's happening to us because because the people who uh, are in charge of us, and I won't mention the government, they want us divided. And I have noticed that when I am out and there are shoppers and I have mugs of shoppers, everyone is goes out of their way to be nice to everyone else. I've noticed that too. I think it's a, I think it's a craze because it's an undercurrent of the goodness of God that nobody can interfere with hmm. and who we had become in our pride and in our forgetfulness of him and our busy busy ways, we're now being brought down to the basic, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's and it's apparent. People, everyone, everyone is excuse me and don't worry about it and everybody's smiling and everybody has been wishing every one of us holiday. The mm -hmm. last few days I have been out several places and everybody is wishing everyone you know, and they wanted to get rid of Thanksgiving because they don't want us to remember our roots. And everybody is blessing everyone. It just, and I just really thank God for it because it keeps you going. That's right. You know, in spite of, spite of the miasma that, you know, they're, they're trying to yeah. destroy us. <laughs> and they're trying to sure. destroy our unity in our hearts. But everybody is recognizing everyone, you know, with, with love. Yeah, and that's something ultimately, as believers, you know, is a great opportunity for witness to, you know, I mean, of all times, probably in our, in not only our own nation, but in our world, mm -hmm. uh, where we can be a blessing and encouragement and, and have opportunity to share, you know, not only the love of God, but the, the gift of God. Right. Um, and with individuals, I think this is one of the greatest opportunities that will probably be given. That's true. Uh, maybe even before his return, we don't know. Because people are hurt. Christ wants to use us, and we're ashamed. He breaks his heart. He breaks his heart. We're ashamed of him. We, and it's not us that they were destined, it's him. But he wants us to go up to Dustin, and people need it. They're hurt, man. They're killing, they're overdosing, and they're killing, and they're looking for answers. And we got the answers, and God help us. It's sad. That's right. We need to get busy, because our days, we don't know when he's coming or what, but we got to get busy while we can. Well, the next one's going to be uh, in John chapter 6. John chapter 6. And verse 11. Here you see Here, John chapter 6, verse 11. And it says, and Jesus, well, here it says, verse 10, then Jesus said, make the people sit down, and there was great, there was much grass in the place, good thing, there was 5,000 people. Mm -hmm. So the men sat down in a number of about 5,000, and once again, that's only including the men, that's not even including the children and, and, and the women that were no doubt there. And then it says, and Jesus took the loaves, and when he had and, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down and likewise of the fish as much as they wanted. Mm -hmm. And so once again, we see here um, the example of Jesus Christ before all these people giving thanks for what God had done. Yeah. And here, once again, um, and, and then it goes on, right? And then verse 12, so when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Therefore, they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets. I, I love that example um, because right before they had come to Jesus Christ, or to Jesus asking, you know, how in the world are we going to feed all these people, all the disciples? They were penny-pennying it, you know, if you will. And here, 
And he says, gather the fragments that remain. And, uh, and I knew, I know for a fact, he knew how many baskets were going to be filled. There was 12. No, I don't believe there's any uh, coincidence in that. I think this was a great example to the disciples. You know, here is your proof. What more proof do you need that I am your all-sufficient Savior? And so then he goes on in verse 14, and to those men, oh, well, I'm sorry, verse 13, therefore he gathered them up, filled the 12 baskets, um, and, and then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, this is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. What a blessing, right? You know, we hear that story. You probably heard that story when we were little. And really, the greatest blessing was not necessarily just the food itself. Yes, it nourished all those people. But the true blessing was is for those all those people to, as it says in verse 14, to be able to come to the realization where it says this is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. Yeah. That was the whole point. Whether it be the 5,000, and then the trickle down was the 12 baskets that show the disciples that I am who I say that I am. Amen. And then the one that gets me the most in the same story <laughs> is, um, let me back up, Verse 8, where it says, One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? Here's the one that I always, in this story, there's a lot going on, right? But to me, the one that is always, ever since I was a kid, that always stuck out was the lad. And we never hear any more about this, this child. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Nothing's ever said. You know, what happened to him? You know? He had to go home, you know. But can you imagine being that, that kid that day? This was a, probably no doubt a lunch that his, his mom had packed for him that morning going out. And to, to whether it was to just come hear Jesus or whatever the situation was, why he had the fish. It's not stated, it's conjecture. But he had it. And so here, we, can you imagine being that child? And, and after this event, can you imagine how that changed his heart? How that changed his life? His, hey, can you imagine the story? He went home to tell his mom. <laughs> you know, you talk about a whopper of a tail. You know, yeah, I had a fish this big. Well, here, Jesus went and did, fed 5,000 people with my lunch. And um, but can you imagine that and how that changed his life? And that's the one that always stands out to me. And 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 it's unsaid. But can you imagine even the praise? Even I'm sure that that, that child even gave to the Lord. That would be a, that's an amazing thought. So once again, there's a couple different ones here, right? There's Jesus Christ giving thanks, but I can imagine even in that boy. And give him thanks. Then um, Luke chapter 17. There's just two more. Luke chapter 17. I know we're going over, but we're not going to be here tomorrow night. So, um, Luke chapter 17 and verse beginning of verse 11. This is one of my favorite stories um, in the Bible, and especially when it comes to thankfulness. And here, Luke chapter 17, beginning in verse 11, it says, Now, now it happened as he went to Jerusalem, talking about Christ, that he passed through the midst of, the, of Samaria and Galilee. Now, once again, remember, we read this story and it's like, okay, so he passed through Samaria and Galilee. This is an area where Jews normally didn't travel. They went out of the way. And you have to keep that in mind. But it was no accident what happened here this day. It was, and, and this was on purpose, God's plan. So it says, verse 12, Then he had entered into a certain village. There met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. 
And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Can you imagine being these ten lepers? One of them. And here, Jesus, because he was a Jew, shouldn't have even really, by all rights, been here at all. And then you have a leper who was unclean. They were basically the off-scouring of society. And no one had anything to do with them. And even they themselves knew that. It says even they stood afar off. Then you have verse 13 where it says that they lifted up their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Can you imagine being them? And all of a sudden, oh, here's Jesus. This is my one shot at being healed. I'm sure they had already heard about the miracles that he had been doing. And here, all of a sudden, here's Jesus, by all rights again, it shouldn't have even been there. He's right in their midst. And it says uh, in verse 13, they lift up their voices, have mercy on us. Verse 14, so when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was, that, it, it, I love this, as they went, they were clean. You talk about showing faith. Huh? Go show yourself to the priest. Well, <laughs> I'm a leper. How am I going to do that? He's not even going to want to talk to me. But through their faith, right? And here as it goes, it says, and as they went, they were cleansed. And then it goes on. It says in verse 15, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, here's the sad part too. It says one of them. When he saw that he was healed, uh, returned and with a loud voice glorified God. And he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan, as if we didn't already know that. He reiterates this point here, here in the story. He was a Samaritan. It's someone that the Jews should have had nothing to do with. But here he comes back and, and he gives Christ thanks. He gets at his feet. And then 17 says, so Jesus answered and said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, arise and go your way. Your faith has made you well for a whole. And so once again, we see this one come back to give God praise. You know, all the others, I'm sure they were thankful, right? And then, But they went showing off, I'm sure, to people that, you know, probably didn't want anything to do with them beforehand, and maybe to their family that they maybe had never seen in years. But yet, we see one that came back to thank Jesus Christ for actually healing. Amen. What a blessing, huh? And uh, I'll give you just a quick story now. Um, my dad... Um, Whenever he lost, he was working in a plant down in Chattanooga and also pastoring um, part well, was full time. It was never part time, but he was he was ministering also in another church and doing both together. And um, the, the plant shut down and basically needed employment and full time employment. And so anyway, so he went to I told him I said, well listen, I said Bob Jones, which which. Um, we graduated from, they have a placement program, I said, and he graduated from Tennessee Tough. And um, and so he, uh, I said, you know, we were talking about it, and you know, so we'll just contact them. They have this placement service where um, graduates can contact and they can, and then other churches contact them, and they try to put them together to try to find positions. And so and I said, well, you put, you know, you put your, your kids through, through college, you, you know, basically pay for us to go through, it's maybe the least they can do. So anyway, so he contacted them and, and talked to his, uh, Bruce McAllister, was the gentleman that was over the ministerial training. And uh, so anyway, they um, contacted him. He was very gracious. And Dad told him, listen, I didn't graduate from here. You know, put my kids through here. But uh, anyway, Bruce was very gracious, let him go through the process and ended up finding the church where they are now, down in uh, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And um, and anyway, it's really neat because uh, um, Dad called Bruce back after he got the position. And uh, he made the comment and, and told me, thank you, you know, for, for allowing me to do this. And told how the Lord worked, really worked it all out. And, and, uh, and Bruce McAllister, I guess, was quiet for a second and just teary-eyed. And he told him, he said, uh, 
He said, you know, he said, in all years of doing this, he said, um, no one else has ever called to thank me for doing this. And uh, so anyway, it's a pretty neat example of that. But here you see, um, and he quoted uh, this portion about the leper. That's why I brought that out. This he said, you know, you're, you're like the one leper that came back. So anyway, great illustration, isn't it? So here we see the leper who blessed Jesus came back. And then the last one for tonight, Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. And we're going to be looking at verse, begin verse 3. You know, I, this thought just stood me. I know I'm always time conscious, trying to be, you never know, I guess, tonight. But, you know, I thought just hit me, you know, if we don't, if we don't enjoy this, we're not going to enjoy heaven too much. <laughs> so, anyway, that's my little plug to say. Amen. Um, so, Philippians chapter 1. Uh, beginning in verse 3, and we're going to read down to verse 11. So here, Paul, Paul's talking here, and Paul gives, gave thanks to God for the believers in Philippi because of their partnership with him in the, in the gospel. Philippians chapter 1, beginning verse 3, says, I thank my God on every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy, for your fellowship. In the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the, until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Just as it is right for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my chains and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers with me of grace. For God is my witness, how greatly I long for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. Verse 9 says, And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and in all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. Isn't that, aren't those precious verses? Amen. He starts out the whole thing by saying, I thank God on every remembrance of you. And you know, as I was thinking at this text, I was thinking about even a church. This really should be said of each, could, should be said of each one of us towards one another. Even here in this assembly. You know, that we're thankful for what God has given us here. We may be few in number, but hey, you know, to me, I would rather go to a church that's that's loving one another, has a heart for one another. He talks about that they're praying for one another here in the verse, and he says in the verses, he goes on and says um, just in verse 7, just as it is right for me to think of you all because I have you in my heart. That's exactly how we should be with one another. Why is it that we um, care so much is because, you know, it's not just in our thought whenever something is said about one another, but it's because each one is in our hearts. And there's a, that's a, a, a great difference, isn't it? We can come here, and, I mean, people can become members of a loose lodge, yeah. but they're not necessarily members of their own heart. Mm -hmm. right. This is something special that, as we've been seeing all throughout tonight, this is something that God has done. The, the brothers and sisters in Christ that we are to one another, that's something that God has done. And that we're here tonight, giving him praise together is no accident. So what a blessing that is, isn't it? And then he ends it by saying there in verse, 10, uh, verse 11, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. So he's saying, you know, hey, you know, I wish I could be with you all. But he also understands in these verses, and that's what he's getting across, is the reality that whether we're in chains or whether we're in the church, whatever, wherever we are in life, is to basically be doing everything to the glory of God. And that was Paul's heart, wasn't it? So once again, here, last example that we'll share tonight was Paul. And so, and his love for one another in the church itself. 
couple others that we didn't have time to go through. Well, we did get through one. We talked about the boy who supplies the loaves and fish. And, I, and, and again, in all these we talked about tonight, it was all individuals that, that gave God thanks, no matter what the situation was. Right. A couple other ones that just make mention of it. And again, you know, I, I gave this tonight just to maybe spend some time in Thanksgiving. I think it's always one where we know we should be thanking God, but how do we do that? Maybe go through one of these stories with your family or whatnot. Um, another couple of them that I'll just point out, Daniel the lion's dead. <laughs> you think Daniel wasn't thankful? I think he was thankful. So she woke up the next morning, he was still alive. And But it wasn't just that he didn't get eaten. Once again, it's because of what God had done, right? In his life. Also, David, after he forgave him of his sins with Bathsheba and murder. Think about that. You know, all these other ones are great, you know. Oh, the Lord gave me a child and I was barren. You know, these are great stories. But think about the, and, and, and David spends a lot of the Psalms, especially, talking about this. And we've gone through a lot of them, in, even in our studies. Um, but even asking God for forgiveness, but also the thankfulness of God's, God's forgiveness to him. And that's an amazing thing, isn't it? You think about it in our lives. Uh, we may not be commit, committing murder, you know, or sexual sins of that nature. But you think about, in our own lives, how that God forgives us of any sin. Any sin is what damns us to hell. And that he's forgiven us. We should be a thankful people even for that. How lovely. So once again, um, David, after he sinned. Also the woman at the well. Think about that one. She was thankful. She went, she went back to the town. Um, not the most prominent woman in the town. Telling everyone, you know, come and see the one who, who has told me everything that I did. And he knows about me. And he knew it all. And so here, and here the whole town comes out. And, and, uh, and so once again, we have the woman at the well. We also have the blind man. Uh, and and the, the list goes on in the New Testament, right? We have all these different accounts, but even the blind man, how did he went? He was that. So again, the, the Bible is, is full, chock block full of, of illustrations of thankfulness. And I think that in each one of these we point out tonight and alluded to here at the end, all of these really come back to the fact that in each one of these situations how that, that should be a great reminder of the thankfulness that we should have towards our great God. Because it's the same God, right? The same God that delivered and, and blessed in the Old Testament was the same God that delivered and blessed in the New. And he's the same God that's continuing to work in this age as well. So what a blessing it is to be able to have a God that's continuing to work on our behalf and just to pause and give him thankfulness and show thankfulness. And, and again, not just this week, right? Um, if you're on Facebook, I put out a, a devotional uh, yesterday talking about how is our thankfulness going to be on Friday and, and what is that going to look like. Um, we should be as thankful on Friday as we are, are on Thursday. And so once again, a great reminder for us to be thankful to our God for everything that he does. Yes? That's not going to ask, I'll just follow this one. I know you this is good, being thankful. How, how is your mom and dad and, and Jennifer's mom and dad, how are they doing? They're doing they're doing well. Mom had a little bit of a, I'm not going to get into that on Facebook, but uh, mom had a little bit of scare yesterday. Uh, ended up um, in the ER over a situation, but anyway, but everything's turning out okay. She's on some medicines. And um, so anyway, um, yeah, they're doing well overall. Okay, because I knew your mama has had some little things, and she used to work for the abortion thing and all that, too. Yeah, yeah. But I, mean, I knew that I was just running, and Je is Jennifer's people doing all right? Yeah, they're doing fairly well. They're on their way. Um, pray for them. They're traveling tonight, or today, right, down to Georgia um, for Thanksgiving, so pray for their safety, if you would. Okay. Yeah. The last book that we went to is Philippians. Mm -hmm. It's... Uh, quite rejoicing uh, book mm -hmm. because Paul said rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always. That's right. Mm -hmm. Again, I say rejoice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I knew I could get all right to say something for love to you. I knew you would say something for love to you. Well, 
Well, here's the good news. We're still getting out earlier than we would have before. <laughs> when we changed it back an hour. We'll look at it that way. Well, we sure appreciate each one of you being with us tonight. And um, great opportunity, you know, just to um, spend some time just being thankful. And um, before that, before Thanksgiving. And uh, once again, it shouldn't be anything new. It should be, and again, I interject that, it should be a daily occurrence in our lives, not just a once in a year, you know, we're thankful we got through the year, uh, let's have some turkey. But it's the idea that we should be thankful to God every day for what he's doing for us. Is there a lot of things we can complain about? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. You know, but who doesn't have something to complain about? But once again, it's to be able to just spend the time thanking God for what he is doing and what he's continuing to do. In our lives. So let's close the word of prayer as we know. Father, we just come before you tonight. We're just thankful, dear God, just for all of these various uh, illustrations and various characters in the Bible that we were able to bring out tonight from your word. And I uh, thank you, the Father, just how that they are such an um, illustration of the thankfulness that we should have in our own heart, in our own lives towards you. And I pray that you just be with us even as we go from here. Help us to be known as a thankful people here in our church. And, and, our, and I pray, our Father, for our nation right now. Um, there's a lot of things we don't like that's going on. And there's a lot of things we might not like coming up even more so shortly. But we can continue to be thankful to you, dear Father, for what you are continuing to do in our lives. And I pray that you can help us no matter what's going on around us to be thankful and in, in you. And so we ask all these things.